Late in the afternoon, hope died out. The waiting crowds thinned and silent men and women sought their homes. In the humbler homes of Southampton, there is scarcely a family who has not lost a relative or friend. Children returning from school appreciated something of tragedy, and woeful little faces were turned to the darkened, fatherless homes. The Daily Mail, 23rd of April, 1912. Oceanus. It sank in the now, expat down with all hands, seen one Wednesday in a sinking southern city. It hit the April showers, serving death en route to Yorkshire, killing peace and war, and Mary timed it well. She was the biggest, longest woman to float the virgin shore. She carried earthly money, moving west with dragons and searching for the new world order. It was final, fit as fiddles and sinking in opulence. She was power disguised as newspapers, tight eyes distant and darting to the doors. Mary was barely alive, a product of time with a thousand close relations, half of them drowning underwater. Mary left at ten, dipping south of the border and back once more. She was left inside a shambles four days after crossing into winter. She buckled up her belt and looked down on the stars through opened arms. It was all over in a heartbeat, quicker than a screening of a feature film. Her heart sank and they went women and children first. Mary fell apart and let them go. Instantly drinking, they followed her. They were shocked, awed and outraged, things going missing and failing operations, rules and regulations in stateside seaside safety. Mary left a legacy of silos, ten decades of future improvements, mostly lost clothing and families struggling for money, Chairman Bruce scarred for life accused of cowardice and complacency. Mary's wrecked and seldom seen slowly drifting. We found her and displayed her in museums, going down on her in history. She's famous now, a softly sleeping song background. Mary was born in Belfast, the middle sister of Olympians, formerly gigantic with the biggest tits and tender teens. She talked with Captain Morgan, ran faster than Hamburg and Berlin, raced Ishmael building bins and condominiums. They were built by wolves with bells on, with well-known flowers and designer labels. They switched constants and turned away. Oceanus threw the wolves to the wind and wrote dark lines in dry tombs in case the games gained the ruling troika, charging extra for murder in the water. Dogs and scoundrels whipped the sky with lords and ladies, bearded mathematicians, chess champions and other madmen. They painted seasides red with general implements, building sharp-eyed statues of David's mighty lifetime. Dimensions and layout. Mary was long and tall, and her breasts were measured from head to heel, and sex offenders called her disappointing. She decked her sisters, carried cards for friends and family. She set sails and indexed every hour before the northern star alighted. Bridges were burned and wheels were stacked, and Mary put her first foot forward, a stretched out totalitarian entrance. They came to hit the ceiling, while cigarettes were rolled like seashells. Dead trees eked out racial engines, they lined livers and covered railings. There was another, who stroked reserves and drew palm trees in the courtroom. Mary built bridges and the weight nearly killed her. They took her through promenades, ate in restaurants like lost lepers in the darkness. Mary, she slept by smokers, raised hell's accommodation with gadget machines. They said human flight was impossible. See, she sheltered high and interrupted jawlines, well west of worthless walkways. Mary crewed four castles in the public eye, reading Bibles in the library. They slung guns in western bars, stealing skylines. Goddamn peasants eating pliers in the sunshine. This was a common crib for firemen, and now it's time for water. They cared for cooks and seamen, stained stewards who trimmed beards for pittances, by completionists who took care of nothing, gangsters at the bottom, gangsters who stared through gaps at waterfalls. Mary wore tank tops and swam below the waterline, down beneath the bottom of the boilers. She was the dominatrix, the sleek invisible steam. Mary walked upstairs to D-Deck. Engines, boilers and generators. Oceanus was the ruling troika, hot with reciprocal love and steamy in the middle. She had points to spare and gave love to turbans. They'd been used before. Mary gave back power like a slow car to New Orleans, wore cosmic vibes mixing movies with petroleum, cut back on mysteries while kettles boiled. They were all powerful with two dozen double-ended furnaces. We kept them warm with fire, burning embers, fed by hand, mailing bodies to the sea. It was dirty, dark and dangerous. Desperate men died fighting. Their excrement was something silent. They made legends in the boiling room, drinking milk and steaming waterfalls. Mary had the power. She could feed cities and sparkled aluminium. She kept emergency cigarettes out back and stayed up way past midnight. Technical facilities. 
See, Mary had an ass and needed two long legs to move it. She hopped across town with one shoe in her handbag, stiff spring chickens pitching in with things. She had recruits to captain. She was always fond of crying and warmed her veins by boiling kerosene, complicated but easy to play. They gave her clean water, but she could turn salt sour in a heartbeat. She drove air through classic caravans, sang through chipped teeth, absorbing sound in foreign languages. Her lungs were strung parallel and could really bellow through blackness, the strongest soprano of the century. She ensured her voice and sang for gypsies. Mary was a Marxist, passing icicles through her cheekbones. Passenger facilities. Mary had bountiful babies, treated like kings and locked behind steel doors for doubtful shareholders. She could only carry shopping bags, develop bad manners and ate crackers, drew caricatures and floated overseas. Mary had mobiles picking blackberries in the summer sun. She swam and curled and drank on the veranda, devil's splendours staring stony-faced. She had Paris in the autumn, filtering sunlight. They ruled in isolation, their luxury confined to cabins on the mountainside, numbering hundreds. They pissed in the wind, washed rags and linen, filing iron while pigs sleep with other pigs. They gave them fun and games and smoked cigars outside gymnasiums, walking past broken benches. They printed out addresses and sold them for a face with personality. Mary was famous for her straight spine and she'd go down on anyone. Clouds called her heavenly and life was lighter than iron. She wore wooden watches and prayed for hope and glory. Seconds ticking away like grains of sand in a waterfall. Now she's just a void or a shortcut to the future. Mail and cargo. She was a person for people, a real socialite with a talent for carrying cardboard, cubes of dead limbs and magic bullets. They have issues, man. They brought past relationships and dead generations. They picked them all, packed up in trunks and golden boxes, holy light electrical steaming hotter than the summertime, all that baggage hauling coal. Lifeboats. Mary wore dozens of belts, and her wooden wolves were folding deck chairs filled to brimming. They carried dozens and would cut wood past security guards with odd smiles. Offshore captains courting skinny women who challenged them to carry water to the finish line, stringing ropes around their necks to save the men from drowning. Mary was big enough for everyone, but without a full stomach. Back then, the cold exceeded all expectations. <laughs>